Hi, my name is Stan Conven. I'm the founder of the Greek for All Institute, and I want to welcome you to the Greek Quest videos. But first of all, I want to thank you for subscribing to our newsletter. I am excited and I'll do everything I can to provide you with the best resources for learning Biblical Greek. In fact, by the end of this very first video, you will be able to read your Greek Bible on your own. Enjoy the video, learn new grammar, and at the end I will include a very special promise which will guarantee your success. But first, I want you to meet someone. Let's go and visit our purpose. Hi and welcome! To my class. In the beginning of each episode, we are going to review the homework you received in the previous lesson. In a simple down-to-earth manner, I will lead you step by step through the process of translating Greek texts. We will not be able to cover all of the exercises. Usually I'll pick two, three examples which will give us plenty of opportunities to review the grammar you have studied. And since this is the very first lesson, we have nothing to review! I wish you all the best in studying the alphabet, and I'll see you in the next episode. And usually I want to finish with a quote. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. I'll see you next time. This is the second and the most exciting part of the video, in which we are going to learn a new grammar. In this lesson, we will study the Greek alphabet and the rules of phonetics or pronunciation which will enable you to read Greek. So, let us begin. I bet you know more about Biblical Greek than you think. Do you remember yourself sitting in a science or algebra class, looking at all of the equations and formulas, thinking, will I ever use this in my life? Who knew? I think you already know majority of the Greek alphabet. When Greeks conquered the world, they brought lots of things – science, math, sports and literature, poetry and theaters, and of course, their language. It was so simple and easy to learn that even when the Romans took over, people still preferred to use Greek language. It was everywhere – business, art, education, religion… No wonder when we go to school, we still use Greek. Let me see. Can you name this letter? It's very easy. It's P. What about this one? Alpha. And this? Beta. Let's jump a little bit forward. Lambda. And this? Mu. What about this one? Sigma. We could go on and on, and the point is simple – you already know some Greek. Let's take a look at the Greek alphabet together. The Greek alphabet has 24 letters. The English word alphabet comes from the first two letters of the Greek alphabet – alpha and beta. Alpha, beta. Alphabet. There are three blocks of letters in the Greek alphabet, which correspond to certain letters in the English alphabet. Let's look at those blocks together and see some similarities. The first block is alpha, beta, delta, and epsilon which corresponds to English A, B, D, E. Alpha, Beta, Delta, Epsilon. The second block is Yota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, which corresponds to English I, K, L, M, N. And the last block of letters is in red – Omicron, P, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, which corresponds to O, P, R, S, T, U in English. As you can see, there are lots of similarities, but now let us go through the entire alphabet, one letter at a time. 
And the first letter of the Greek alphabet is the letter alpha. It gives us a sound A as in the word father. The second letter in the Greek alphabet is beta. It gives us a sound B as in the word bet. The third letter in the Greek alphabet is gamma. And gamma gives us a hard sound G as in the word get or god. It doesn't give us a soft sound G as in the word gem. There is a little nuance we need to learn about gammas. When two gammas stand together, it is unnatural and difficult for us to pronounce them as gg, gg. Greeks came with a solution to pronounce the first gamma as n. For example, in this word we have two gammas standing together. It is incorrect for us to pronounce it as aggilos. We pronounce it as angelos, angelos from which we have the English word angel. What's true about two gamma standing together is also true about three other letters, kappa, he, and xi. If any of these letters follow gamma, this first gamma is pronounced as n. For example, in this word, ankara, ankara, from which we have the English word anchor. The next letter in the Greek alphabet is delta, and delta gives us a sound d, as in the word dog. The next letter is epsilon. Epsilon gives us a sound e, as in the word get. The next letter is zeta. It gives us a sound z, as in the word zero. The next letter is eta. It gives us a long sound e. It is the same sound as of the letter epsilon, e but it is a little bit longer, as in the word obey. The next letter is theta, and it gives us a sound t, as in the word top. Some may prefer to pronounce it as th, as in the word theology, but I prefer t. Letter iota gives us a variety of sounds. It can be a short e, as in the word hit. It can be a long e, as in the word machine, and it also gives us a sound y, as in the word yellow, sound y. Usually when yota appears in diphthongs, and we're going to talk about them in a minute, it gives us a sound y. Remember that. The next letter is kappa, and kappa gives us a sound k, as in the word keep. Lambda gives us a sound l, as in the word lamp, Letter mu gives us a sound m, as in the word mouse. The next letter is nu. It gives us a sound n, as in the word new. Letter xi gives us a sound x, as in the word x. This is omicron. It gives us a sound o. It doesn't give us a sound o, as we like to pronounce it in English. No. It gives us a sound O, as in the word top. The next letter is P, and it gives us a sound P, as in the word put. The next letter can be a little bit confusing, as it looks exactly as the English letter P, but it is the letter Rho, and it gives us a sound R, as in the word rod. So remember, it is not P, it is the letter Rho. The next letter is sigma, and it gives us a sound s, as in the word sit. A little nuance about sigma. If sigma is the last letter in the word, it is called stigma, and it is written a little bit different, but it still gives the sound s. A good example of this is the word seismos. The next letter is tau, and it gives us a sound t, as in the word talk. It gives us the same sound as the letter theta, sound t. Some follow the modern Greek uh, and uh, distinguish the pronunciation of theta and tau, but many scholars give them the same sound, the sound t. I support this view, and throughout this course I'll give both letters one sound, t. The next letter is upsilon. It gives us two sounds. It can be U, as in the word university. It also can be U, 
as in the word book. Next letter is fi. It gives us a sound f, as in the word phone. Letter he gives us a sound h, as in the word happy or here. The next letter is psi. It gives us a sound ps, as in the word lips. And the last letter in the Greek alphabet is omega. It gives us a long sound o, as in the word note. And uh, now let us talk about the Greek diphthongs. A diphthong is a combination of two vowels which make one syllable. There are proper and improper diphthongs. First, let us talk about the proper diphthongs. And we will begin by reviewing the Greek vowels. There are seven vowels in Greek alphabet, and uh, there are two types of them, uh, the short ones and the long ones. So, uh, the first four comes in pair. This is the E-class vowels, they give us the sound E, and this is the O-class vowel, they give us the sound O. So, Epsilon and Omicron are always short, Eta and Omega are always long, and Alpha a iota and upsilon can be both, either short or long. In the old days, in the ancient days, the Greeks pronounced these letters based on their length, but today that difference is lost, so the difference between the long and the short vowels is simply grammatical, so we pronounce them the same. We do not uh, worry how long they are. So, the proper diphthongs are the combination of the short vowels and the letters iota and upsilon. There are only seven proper diphthongs in Greek. Let us take a look at them. And uh, the first diphthong we are going to talk uh, about is the diphthong i. It gives us the sound i, as in the word isle. And the Greek example is the word ion. Ion, this is our diphthong I, I on. Uh, this word means age. The second diphthong is oi. It gives us the sound oi, as in the word oil. The Greek example is the word oinos, oinos, meaning wine. The next diphthong is a. It gives us the sound a, as in the word eight. And the Greek example is the word hair, hair, hand. The next diphthong is the diphthong ui. It gives us uh, the similar sound uh, with the word queen, but not exactly like queen, because queen gives us the sound uin. And this is the diphthong ui. Four of this diphthong give us similar uh, pronunciation. I, I, oi, a, and ui. So the uh, Greek example is the word huios. This is our diphthong huios meaning sun, a very good word to remember. The next diphthong is au, it sounds similar to the word mouse, au, mouse. The Greek example is the word paulos, paulos, meaning Paul. And uh, the next two diphthongs do not have any equivalent in English, but they are pronounced the same, eu, eu. The Greek examples are basileus, king, and heuron. I found. This last diphthong starts with a long vowel, but it is still considered the proper diphthong. Uh, there is a variation of how to pronounce these two diphthongs. Some pronounce them as U, and they say there is an example in English, the word feud, and uh, then they would pronounce this word as Basileus, Basileus, a king, and Huron, Huron, I found. In this course, I will pronounce them as eu, uh, because uh, the previous diphthongs is pronounced as au, so it is logical to pronounce this one as eu, eu. So just remember, there is a variation of pronunciation right here. In this course, I will pronounce them as eu. So, a little nuance about diphthongs. If uh, an accent in a word falls on a diphthong, it will be written above the second letter but we still pronounce the diphthongs uh, with the stress on the first letter. Let us practice reading them again. I, oi, a, ui, au, eu, eu. Let's look at a few examples. 
For example, the word Basileus has a, an accent right here, which falls on the diphthong, and as you can see, it is written above the second letter in the diphthong, but we do not pronounce this word as Basileus, Basileus, no. We pronounce it as Basileus, Basileus. Another example is the word Paulus. We have another type of accent right here, but it is still uh, written above the second letter in the diphthong. So we do not pronounce this word as Paulos. Paulos. No, we still say Paulos. Paulos. Another good example is the word Oinos. It has both the accent and a breathing mark, and we're going to talk about them in a few minutes. And both of them are written above the second letter in the diphthong, but we still pronounce it as oinas, oinas. So just remember that if the accent falls on the diphthong, it will be written above the second letter, but we still stress the first letter. And uh, now let us look at the improper diphthongs. The improper diphthongs are even easier. It is a combination of a long vowel alpha, eta, or omega, and the smallest letter in the Greek alphabet, iota. In this case, iota is so afraid of these long vowels that it jumps under the line and sits there very, very quietly. It is called iota subscript, and uh, sub means under, script means written, so written under, and again, remember, it is silent, we just ignore it when it comes to pronunciation. So instead of saying I, A, or oi, we just say a, e, and o. Let us take a look at a few examples. And the first word we're going to read today is the word basileia. We have two diphthongs here. The first one is a proper diphthong, a, and uh, this is our improper diphthong. This is our iota subscript. Let's read it together. Basileia, basileia. The next word is grafe. This is our iota hidden right there. Grafe. Grafe, scripture. And uh, the last example, en, to, cosmo. We have two yodas, first and the second. En, to, cosmo. In the world. And uh, the last little nuance we need to learn about the diphthongs, it is a digraph u. It is not a diphthong o. It is a digraph u. It gives us one sound u, as in the word boutique, or the word soup. And the Greek example is the word Iesus, Iesus, meaning Jesus. We are almost at the end of our lesson, but we still need to cover three very important elements. Breathing marks, accents, and the punctuation signs. In order to explain this part of the lesson, I am going to use my whiteboard. If a word in Greek starts with a vowel, diphthong, or a letter rho, it should have a breathing mark. And there are two types of breathing marks in Greek, the rough one and the smooth one. And the smooth one looks exactly like a comma, and the rough one looks like a reverse comma. And uh, the breathing marks are written above the first letter of a Greek word, and the rough one indicates that that first letter will have an initial H sound, and the smooth one indicates that that H sound is absent. Now let us look at a few examples and practice reading Greek words which have the breathing marks. And uh, the first word which we will read today is the word aner, a man, a husband. When it comes to reading Greek, uh, we need to pronounce every single letter as we see it in a word. So let's first name every letter in this word. Alpha, nu, eta, rho. And these four letters give us four sounds. A, n, e, r, aner, aner. As you can see, we have the smooth breathing mark right here above the letter alpha. And the smooth breathing mark means that uh, there is no extra uh, pronunciations, extra sounds uh, which we need to add to this uh, alpha. We read it as a, aner, aner. In the second example, 
we have the rough breathing mark, the reverse comma, which means that we need to bring the sound H before, before uh, this uh, letter ETA. First, let's name every letter in this word. ETA, MU, EPSILON, RO, ALPHA, and uh, we receive five sounds, E, M, E, R, A, but we do not read this word EMERA, EMERA. Because of this rough breathing mark, we need to bring the sound H in front of uh, this uh, ETA, HEMERA, HEMERA. There are two ways how uh, you could pronounce this um, uh, rough breathing mark. Some people give it a deeper pronunciation, kind of rougher pronunciation, which comes from the depth of your lungs, H, HEMERA, and I prefer softer pronunciation, H. Hemera. So throughout this course, I will use the softer pronunciation H. Hemera. Um, let's look at uh, a few more examples. If a uh, Greek word starts with the letter Y or a letter Rho, they will always have the rough breathing marks. All right. And uh, this is the word Hudor. Hudor. Uh, remember, this is the rough breathing mark. We bring the H sound. It's not Udor, Udor. It is Hudor. Uh, the breathing mark above the letter Rho is silent, so we read this word as Rema, Rema. And uh, if two letters Rho appear together, both of them will have the breathing marks. Uh, one will be soft, and the second one will be always rough. But again, uh, the breathing marks above the letter RO are silent, so we do not pronounce them. Eromenos. 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 We need to pay attention to the breathing marks, because they can actually change the meaning of uh, Greek words. For example, uh, there is a word N with a smooth breathing mark, which means in. This is the preposition in. And the same two letters with the rough breathing mark means number one. Another example is the one letter word with the rough breathing mark, he. He will mean the definite article the for the feminine nouns. And the same letter with the smooth breathing mark, e, will mean the word or. So, as you can see, just the breathing mark can change the meaning of the word. And uh, besides the breathing marks, you already noticed that there are some other things uh, written above the words. These are Greek accents. Let us talk about them. Now, let's talk about the accents. There are three types of accents in Greek. The acute, the grave, and the circumflex accent. In the ancient times, they indicated the uh, rising and falling tone of a word. For example, the acute uh, indicated that the tone of a word was rising, the grave indicated that it was falling, and the circumflex accent indicated that first it was going up and then it would fall down. But in the modern pronunciation, that difference is lost. So for us, all three accents indicate the same that uh, the syllable upon which the accent falls should be stressed as we pronounce it, similar to English. And uh, now let's talk about the punctuation signs. There are four punctuation signs in Greek. The first ones are period and comma, and they correspond to period and comma in English. The next one is a semicolon, which corresponds to a question mark in English. So every time you see the semicolon in the biblical texts, it is actually a question mark in English, which indicates that that sentence in the Greek text is a question. And the last one is a colon, which is just a dot above the line, and it corresponds to a colon or a semicolon in English. Now, as we learned all of the uh, rules of phonetics and pronunciation and punctuation in Greek, let's uh, look at a few examples and practice reading Greek words. 
And uh, the first uh, word we are going to practice reading today comes to us from our logo, from this upper corner. And this is a word logos, meaning word. This is our accent, which means that we will need to stress this letter, this syllable as we read it. First, let's name every letter in this word. Lambda, Omicron, Gamma, Omicron, Stigma. Now let's read it together. Logos, 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 a word. And the next word also comes to us from our logo. It is a word teacher. This is our accent right here. We'll need to stress this alpha. First, let's name every letter in this word. Delta, Yota, Delta, Alpha, Sigma, Kappa, Alpha, Lambda, Omicron, Stigma. Now let's read it. Didaskalos, 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 a teacher. And the last word is a pretty easy one. You can do it on your own. This is our smooth breathing mark. If a letter, if a first letter of a word is a capital letter, the breathing mark uh, shifts a little bit forward and is written in front of the first letter. This is our accent, so we'll need to stress this alpha as we read it. But first, let's name every letter here. Alpha, beta, rho, alpha, alpha, mu. Let's read it together. Abraham, 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 Abraham. This concludes the grammar for the lesson one. You just finished learning a new grammar. And it's the perfect time to see where it is used in the scriptures. Let's visit our Greek sage. Hello, my friend. I've been waiting for you. My name is Didaskalos. I've seen the apostles. I've seen their faith. I've seen the fire in their eyes when they talk about Jesus and the way they treasured his words, the way they shared them, and then they passed it on to us. So it is my duty to pass it on to you. In this part of the lesson, we will be looking into the scripture to see how the grammar which you just learned appears in the text and it's used by the writers of the Holy Bible. And today I prepared a very special promise of our Lord which will give you courage on your journey of learning Biblical Greek. I am rejoicing because these words of our Savior could be the very first Greek text you will read by yourself. Yes, you will read it on your own. Ready? Let's go! This is our text and in this lesson we learned the Greek alphabet so we will focus on reading Greek and we will focus on the correct pronunciation of the Greek letters and this text will help us to do that. And before we dive into it I want to give you a minute to wrestle with the text yourself so pause this video now and try to read it on your own. Now, as you read this text by yourself, let us do it together now. And we will begin with the first word. Let us name every letter here. P, Alpha, Nu, Tau, Alpha. Uh, and uh, these letters give us sounds P, A, N, T, A. This is our accent. We will need to stress uh, this syllable. Let's read it. Panta, Panta, Panta. The next word is delta, upsilon, nu, alpha, tau, alpha. Another accent, we will stress this alpha at the end. Let's read it. Du, na, ta, du, na, ta, du, na, ta. The next word has three letters, tau and omega. And we also have the Yota subscript, which is silent. So these uh, letters give us the uh, sound T, O. We read this word as TO. This is the definite article. We will study them in the lesson number five. TO, TO. And uh, the last word is the longest word. Let's name every letter here. P, Yota, Sigma, 
tau epsilon epsilon omicron nu tau iota this is our accent and here we have the proper diphthong l you see the accent is written about the second letter but we stress it uh, here on the epsilon l uh, so let's try to read half of this word pisteu pisteu now let's add this suffix to it pisteuonti 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 now let's read the whole sentence together panta dunata to pisteuonti now let's translate it panta means all it means everything dunata means possible in this context so everything is possible or all things are possible and uh, topisteuonti is a very interesting construction we will study them later in this course like closer to the end and it means the believing one or the one who believes so let's put everything together panta dunata topisteuonti everything is possible to the one who believes or all things are possible to the one who believes maybe you never believed you could read biblical greek and the idea to learn it was so unreal that you never even tried but as you can see it's not that hard it's not just the privilege of scholars or seminary students you can do it also I guarantee it. And now God himself tells you, you can do it. All things are possible to the one who believes. Panta dunata to pistewenti. Memorize it, take it with you anywhere, remember it anytime. All the best. You've just completed the first lesson of the Greek quest. I am so excited for you. And with that promise of the Lord, there is absolutely nothing what can stop you from finishing the journey. So, what's next? Take the textbook and review the grammar. At the end of the chapter, you will see a few exercises, a homework. It will help you to put this grammar into practice. In the next video, we are going to study the Greek verbs, the words of action. In addition, we will review your homework to make sure that everything you learn is on the right track. So, stick around, I wish you all the best, and I'll see you in the next video.